thank you we are grateful to you for the honor you've accorded us to keep us till this moment we also thank you for a time like this a time like our pastor just said a time of renewal a time of refreshing we ask lord that in this segment you will revive us and you will take us to a new level take us to a higher level amen thank you because we know you're here thank you jesus jesus name we have prayed amen if you saw in the program you'll go to it's the fourth message on page two and it's titled and god remembered noah and god remembered noah when you look at that and you think about and God, uh, there is a likelihood we may start to think that maybe God forgot him, but God never forgets his own. In fact, the Bible says that God always makes sure he keeps his own. It is the righteous that he hears their cry, he watches over them, and he makes sure that he brings them to the expected end. And as we look at this message this evening, what God did with Noah, exactly the same thing, and even greater will God do, he will do with every one of us in him. Amen. Genesis chapter 8, let me just read the first part of verse 1. It is in verse 1, and God remembered Noah, and God remembered Noah. And every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. God did not forget his family. God did not forget all that he owned. God remembered him. And in the scriptures, you find quite a number of places where God remembered people. Samson was praying and he called to God and he said, God, remember me, strengthen me. In this conference, if you are weak, God is going to strengthen you. Amen. This is, you'll find God remembered Abraham on account of Lot. Abraham was praying so that Lot will not be destroyed, so that he will not be destroyed with Sodom. God remembered Abraham and he made sure Lot was not destroyed. Other places you'll find that God remembered even the thief on the cross. Is the same verb, the same word used in the scriptures. And when he remembered, the thief said, remember me when you get to your kingdom. And Jesus writes there, he remembered him. And today, whatever your situation is, God is going to remember you. Amen. He says, God, he does not, he will not, he cannot forget his righteous servants. He cannot he will not. When you look at the outline, it says Noah and his family, they had been preserved from the global devastating flood. Nobody was in the house. All the family, they were preserved. Let me show you something in 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. The Bible says in verse 9, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust. Thank God we're not going to be in that category. He knows how to reserve the righteous. He knows how to keep them. So God kept Noah. He kept his family. They were abiding in the ark. To look at it chronologically, you find that Noah was in the ark for um, about a year. About a year. And God knew that if he remained there, and I want you to set your heart to this, listen to this very well. If you are in the ark, if you happen to be in the ark, if God has brought you out of the world and you remain in a, in a place, a location for so long that, that stagnancy will come. And God does not want that. So what God did is he remembered him to bring him out to bring his family out, to bring them into a place of expansiveness, a place of enlargement, a place they can 
totally expand and flow. That's why God remembered them. And this year, as we're talking and we are praying and calling upon the name of the Lord, I can assure you that God himself is going to take us. We're going to go forth. We're going to break forth. We're going to get into the large places God has prepared for us in Jesus' name. Amen. God wanted to do, again, is this. God wanted to reinstate man to the original purpose. If you remember in Genesis chapter 1, God had created Adam and Eve, and he had told them, multiply, replenish the earth, fill the whole earth. But sin had come in, and this challenge had come. And because of this challenge, the whole earth was practically destroyed, except for God and his family. And this is important for us also to learn. If we are going to be preserved, if we are not going to be destroyed with the whole world and their worries, then we must get into the ark. <coughs> Noah and his family, they were in the ark. But God wanted them to flourish on the face of the expansive earth. When it was time for them to go forth, when it was time for them to break forth, God remember them. Look at verse 16 of that same Genesis chapter 8. Verse 16. God now told them, let me read 15 as well. And God spake unto Noah saying, go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Nothing was left. All the family that were in the ark need to remember, it was the family that was in the ark. Verse 17. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed, what's the next word? Abundantly in the earth. In the earth, and to be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. That was God's plan. That was God's purpose. That was what God did. That is still God's plan. That is still God's purpose, and that is what God is going to do with us in this next three days in Jesus' name. Amen. The season of going forth and breaking forth, and therefore the reason for our divine remembrance. I'm going to talk to you today, and you are going to listen carefully, my brother, my sister. You will tell God this evening, God, remember me. This, I can't hear you, God, remember me. God remember me. God remember me. God remember me. As you remembered Noah and you took him out into a large place. As you remembered Noah and took him into a large place. Take me into a large place. Take me into a large place. God is going to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come to me. Come with me to uh, to point one. Point one talks about remembered in the ark of salvation. Mm. Remember, the rains, the deluge was for four. It continued. And it took another 110 days, about 150 days in all. If they had remained in the ark for more than that period of time, the one year, two years, if they had remained in that ark, cooped up, limited, restrained, what would have happened is stagnancy would have been the order of the day. They would have started to eat up themselves. And that's why in some churches, it is always a problem because there is no growth. There is no expansion. There is always that being cooked up. And that's why they eat up one another. But if there is, you know, uh, going forth, if there is breaking forth, if there is expansion, what will happen is there will be room, great room, and God is prepared great room. He has done it. I read again from the outline. God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God, he made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters are surged. You know, uh, God looked at the situation. God remembered his promises. God knew that what he would do, he was going to do it at the right time. And I want to tell you that God wants to do that what he needs to do for you in your life. And I want to tell you that tonight is the starting point. Amen. When some wonderful things will start to happen in your life. Amen. 
Five things we're going to look at. And I'm going to use the word, letter R, you see it on the outline, to bring them to our remembrance, so that we remember. Number one, there was redemption. Number two on the outline, God brought relief. Number three, there was restraint. Number four, he brought them to rest. And number five, restoration and revving up. You know, when God restores and sets you on your path, everything seems so easy. Everything becomes very easy. Let's go back to number one. Number one, God remembered them, but it was those that were abiding in the ark of salvation. You know, outside the ark of salvation, already those that were there, they had been washed away by the flood. They had perished. They have forgotten already. The question comes to you today, are you in the ark? You know, some years ago, a particular songwriter, a song singer, sang a song in a local language. And he said, the time will come when the people, he said, the time came when the people that knew Noah, but they were not in the ark. They went there and they were knocking on the door and they were saying, I'm your uncle, open the door. Another one came. They were singing and, and they were knocking and they were shouting and they were crying. Maybe some people, some people even came and they were saying, I'm your wife. I can't, you are in the ark. Open the door for me. No one could not open the door. I want to tell you, none of us, nobody here on this platform can open the door for another person. And God does not remember those that, that are outside the ark. Remember, it was those that were inside the ark that were remembered. It was those that were inside the ark that were remembered. It's important for you to note this closely and clearly. No other person can open the door. How did Noah get inside the ark? Come back with me to Genesis chapter 6. How did he get into the ark? Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. I read to you from verse 8. The Bible says, but Noah found grace found favor. God bent towards him in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 9. It says, these are the generations of Noah. This is the reason. Noah was a just man. And he was perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. God. That was why he found grace. That was why God remembered him. He walked with God. You know, the Bible says in Amos chapter 3, verse 3, two cannot work together except they're in agreement. And for us to be able to receive God's grace, to be able to be remembered by God, we must walk with God. We must carry out God's commandments. Look at verse 13 of that same chapter. That same chapter 6. Look at verse 13. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, God says, I will destroy them with the earth. I want to tell you that today, the earth is still full of violence. Violence outside the church. Violence within the church. Violence with our own brethren. Violence in the type of things we say. Violence in our attitude, violence in the household, speaking wrong things. Here you find that Noah, God said he would destroy the earth because violence was all around. Come with me to verse 14. God now instructed him, make thee an ark of God for wood. Rooms shall thou make in the ark and shall pitch it within and without we pitch. And if you go further on, God starts to instruct Noah on what to do, on how to do it. And you know, here we are tonight, when the church, God has been instructing us so many things, so many instructions the Lord has given to us as his own children. The question is, how much of these instructions do you keep? 
The question is, do you claim, you know, sometimes we get angry at other people. And the Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 20, that the wrath of man does not bring forth the righteousness of God. The fact that you can point out something somebody else did does not mean you are also in the ark. It's important that you see yourself the way God sees you. Here, God instructed Noah, build the ark. This is the specification. This is what I expect of you. And God has given us the Bible. God has given us his word. What we must do, how we must do it, the things we must acknowledge, the things we must eschew, the things we must run away from, the things we cannot afford to do. The question still comes to us. You know, sometimes, you know, you see other people. We see ourselves in the church. Instructions the leaders are giving, we flout them. Instructions the Bible has given, we flout them. I have some news for you today. When you flout instructions of the Bible and the leadership of the church, you are not in the ark. Noah was in the ark because he kept every instruction. There's no time for us to read right through all that he did. But look at verse 22 of that same chapter 6, verse 22. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did that was why God remembered him. That was why God could not leave him in the ark. If he had stayed in the ark too long, the animals may have started to eat up themselves. Things may have become so very catastrophic, but he kept the word of God. If you are going to be in the ark, number one, you will find grace in God's eyes. Two, you will keep God's commandments, every instruction. How can you get to that point? Come with me to Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs 28, I read to you from verse 13. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins, the Bible says, shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them, that's the person that will have mercy. That's the person that will find grace. That's the person God will remember. That's the person God will bring into a large place. I want to tell you, my brother and sister, when you start to decide what part of the word of God, the Bible says here that you cannot find mercy. When you start to kick at one part of the scriptures or the other, you cannot find mercy. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, Look at it with me, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Let's look at it together. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. It says there, if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and is just to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We become like somebody who has never sinned. And you need to see that Noah separated himself from all the things that were in the world. He separated himself and got into the ark. The question still comes to you, my brother and my sister. Have you separated yourself from the ways of the world, the fashion of the world, the designs of the world? Are you not the type of person that is bringing the world into the church and you claim you are in the ark? You cannot be in the ark until you have separated yourself. When you read in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the Bible says in verse 17, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Noah separated himself. And that was why Noah was remembered. If God is going to remember you, this very conference, the first, the first thing is you will separate yourself. Separate from yourself from the fashion of the world. Separate yourself from the thinking of the world. Separate yourself from the way of the world. Confess your sin. And you know, I want to tell you something before I move on. You see, so many times, many of us, we claim to have confessed our sins, but we don't forsake them. We don't leave them. We still cuddle them. Sin of rebellion, we cuddle it. We say we're in the church, but we rebel against some things. That shows that yet you are not in the act. 
You only have a name that you live, but yet the Bible says that person is dead. Look at Luke chapter 18. Look at this man here. Luke chapter 18, a very good example for you and for me this evening. Luke chapter 18, turn there with me. I read to you from verse 13. And this man, this publican, standing afar off, he would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but he smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said, this man who acknowledged his weakness, this man who acknowledged his waywardness, this man who acknowledged his lack of uh, total submission went away justified. I'm praying that this evening you will go away justified. Amen. We look at you and say, yes, this is my daughter. Yes, this is my son. I told you already in Luke chapter 23, the story of that thief on the cross, he shouted. He said, remember me when you get to your kingdom. If only you would pray like that, God will remember you. Amen. God will remember you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Else do we learn? Number two, there was relief that came. Come back to Genesis chapter 8. I'm reading again to you from verse 1. Genesis chapter 8. Reading to you from verse 1. <laughs> And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. assuaged. And the waters assuaged. You know, when God remembers, he doesn't just leave you there. You know, you can, you, even today, there was somebody that called me from Africa and I remembered the person. But I couldn't respond to the person. I still left the person where the person is. But that's not God. When God remembers you, he makes something start to happen for you. Here you find what he did was he allowed the wind of God's spirit to move. And the water started to stop. The water started to flow away. The wind of the Holy Ghost will pass over your situation and the devastating flood, it will be assuaged. Amen. When the enemy will come like a flood, the Holy Ghost will bring a standard against the enemy. So number two thing you find is God brings relief. He alleviates the challenges you are facing. He mollifies the situation. He stops the, the, the problem that you are encountering. That's what God does. The flood will be assuaged when God remembers you. And maybe there have been floods. You know, today you make money. The money, you lose it. Tomorrow you make money. There's a challenge. There's a problem. It's like you are not going forward. Though you think, though you are here in Europe, it doesn't seem as if anything is happening. Because the flood has been sweeping away all your efforts. But you know, when God remembers you today, that will come to an end. Amen. Amen. Well, read Isaiah 59 with me. Isaiah chapter 59. Come and see what God will do for you. And God will do in your situation. Isaiah chapter 59. I read to you from verse 19. Isaiah 59. See what God is going to do. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against the enemy of your soul. Amen. So will bring them to a halt. The spirit of God will step them down. The spirit of God will turn them around. They will flee from you. That's what God will do. This is when the enemy will come like a flood, God's spirit will lift a standard and they will not be able to come there. Number three thing God will do when he remembers you is there will be, he will restrain the storms of your life. It will restrain the enemies of your soul. Look at verse 2 of Genesis chapter 8 again. Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. I'm reading to you from verse 2. The fountains also of the deep 
and the windows of heaven, they were stopped. And the rain from heaven was restrained. It was an all round protection. If you look at that verse of scripture, and then you, you, you look at it closely, you find some three things there. You find number one, it says, fountains also of the deep. You know, there are people, their problem is from their foundation, is from deep, is from underneath. When God remembers you, it doesn't leave you there. It doesn't leave that problem that is from underneath. It doesn't leave you there. Here he says, and the fountains also of the deep. Then he says, and the windows of heaven, the one that is coming up at, at, at you, like from the, you know, from the spiritual forces of darkness. He says, that one, it was stopped. And the rain from heaven was restrained. All around protection, whether it was, you know, demonic forces of darkness, whether it is, you know, curses from foundation, whether it's whatever place is coming from. Here, the Bible says, God restrained them. And today, as we pray together, God is going to bring them to an end in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Verse 3. And the waters return from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters, they were totally abated because God restrained them. You know, Satan went, he went here, he went there. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, we're even in a better dispensation. He went and he stood before God and he said, God, this Job, this, and God told him, you can look at him, you can touch this, but you cannot touch his life. God will make sure that the enemy can never touch your life. Amen. There's restraint. Restraint of affliction and punishment. God brings it to an end. He keeps them away. He keeps them at bay. He stops them from your life. He stops them from your family. Enough of the losses. But remember, you must have been in the ark. The Bible says there's no other name than that name is the name of Jesus. The Bible says there's no other way. There's only one way. is the way of life, the way of truth, the way of the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that there is no other door through which you can get into the ark. It must be through that same Savior. The Bible says when you enter into that name, you will be saved. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 verse 10, that through that name, when you enter in, God keeps you. Number four thing God will do when he remembers you. Remember these things I'm telling you. Number one, you must be redeemed. Number two, it will bring relief. It will alleviate your problems. It will take them away from you. Number three, it will restrain all the curses, all the hexes, all the things people have spoken into your life. It is coming to an end in Jesus' name. Amen. Come back with you to Genesis chapter eight. I'm going to read to you from verse four. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. Verse five, and the waters, they decreased continually until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. You know, God started to deal with all those, you know, problematic situations and issues. And eventually there was rest. Somebody that could not sleep before, except he rose here on the bed, rose there, he will have this dream. All of a sudden, you start to, you start to sleep because God brings rest. He brings rest from the pursuit of the enemy. He brings you rest from the torments of the night. This night, God is going to do that work in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. He says there, they bring rest, brought them into rest. Number five thing you will see, when God remembers you, is God will bring you so that you can go forth. God will mm -hmm. rev up the engines of your vehicle and set you in motion. God will bring restoration and take you into a breaking forth. It will be like you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't even understand how it's work. Look at Psalm 126. This is how it will look in Psalm 126. Mm -hmm. Turn your Bible to me. When God does it, this is what it will be. You will be like those, you know, in Psalm 126. I read to you from verse 1. 
when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. That's how it will be. You will, you will be wondering, how did it happen? How did God do it? How am I like this now? How, how am I able to make ends meet? You know, there have been people there in Europe, and I can tell you, it's so much struggle, so much struggle, and it doesn't seem as if there's a way forward. I want to tell you tonight, God will bring you to rest, but I want to yeah. tell you, stop, stop telling yourself that you are in the ark. If you are in the ark, the storms will cease. Amen. Amen. Have you read that story? 150 days. Noah was in the ark, but he was kept. If you are not kept, your ark, you need to get into the ark. And tonight is the night. Please, Amen. my brother, don't tell yourself, I've been in the church for the past 10 years. In fact, the pastor knows me. Well, the pastor may know you, but does God know you? Are you separated from the world? Are you sending money for rituals in Africa? Say, well, I don't send money. It's only that my uncle, I like, but you know, he's a worshiper of idols. You are still worshiping the idol within. God is calling you. He will remember you, but you must be in the ark of salvation. And then your story will change. Amen. Your story will change from tonight in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Let's go to point two. Come back with me to Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. Remembered for acceptable sacrifice. Remembered. You know, as we turn your Bibles there, let me give you, you know, uh, some arithmetic. I will not call it mathematics. I will just call it arithmetic. If you want to get to point three, point three talks about supplies, abiding supplies, you know, and I will, I will be careful in giving illustrations, but I want to tell you, there's a way God can make your supplies never cease. You know, when you read the book of Leviticus, it said, before you finish the supply you have, another one is ready. Before you finish the supply, because God makes sure that the supplies keep coming. But if you want that type of supply, if you want this breakthrough, if you want this spectacular breakthrough, this type of breakthrough that people, you know, when you talk about something being spectacular, it is amazing. When you talk about something being spectacular, it's something that is evident, it's obvious, it's something that everybody is saying, ah, ah this is, 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 is so big, that's spectacular. If you want that type of spectacular abiding supply, just do one plus two equals three. Point one, salvation, plus point two, sacrifice, will bring you into abundant supplies. Many Christians, they suffer untold hardship because they cannot sacrifice. And until you come to the place of sacrifice, sacrifice unto God, sacrifice of yourself. Until you come to that place, you can never really have the supplies. You can pray a lot. You'll only have little, 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 little blessings. Enough of the, we want the showers. Sacrifice. Look at Genesis chapter 8. See what Noah did. I'm reading to you from verse 20. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord. Stop there first. Do you see Noah coming out of the ark? The first thing he does is to build an altar. When you read in Exodus chapter 20, you know, God told them, he said, build an altar. Where you build that altar, I will come there and meet with you. Exodus 20, verse 24. If you want God to be meeting with you, if you want God to be, a covenant, to be in a covenant relationship with you, your altar must be alive. Your altar of fellowship with God. Your altar of service to God. Your altar of giving to God. Not that today you will, you will take from God Tomorrow you will give God a tip. Uh, next tomorrow you will do something. No, 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 not like that. That's why David said in 2 Samuel 24, I will not give unto God what does not cost me something. 
if you want consistent, abiding, abundant supply, sacrifice. Sacrifice. See what Noah did. He must have been praying in the ark. The moment he came out, he wasn't running around looking for how he would plant, how he would do this. He went to do that later. The first thing was sacrifice. Read it again with me. Verse 20. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and he took every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and he offered burnt offerings on the altar. The altar. Look at that. Every clean beast. Every, he didn't bring just anything. You know, when God told Cain, he said, this thing you have brought, there's sin at the door. It's not the right sacrifice. When you're reading, let, let's look at it together. Come to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. I read to you from verse 3. Are we there? Yes, sir. Time. It came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also, he brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and unto his offering. Time will not permit me to start going into, you know, but I want to, ex I want to just tell you that here what Cain brought was just something out of his hands. It was not something, because you could see, God had come and had shown an example when he gave Adam and Eve clothing. An animal was killed. They knew. You will remember Noah came, and Noah knew instinctively. He knew for a certainty the need he had to shed blood. And that's what they all did. Look at verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering, God had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So what you are bringing to God, and you are saying his sacrifice, and you are saying his offering, you know in your heart it's not sacrifice. You know in your heart it's not offering. You know that's not what you are supposed to do, but that's what you are giving to God. And God is not accepting it. God wants acceptable sacrifice, not the one that you have thought up in your mind. It's the one he himself has asked from us. That's when God accepts it. In verse 6, and the Lord said unto Cain, why are you angry? You are angry and praying, let my enemy die. You are angry and you are fighting that brother who told you the truth. You are angry. You are complaining about what somebody is doing. Why are you angry? And why is your countenance falling? Verse 7, he says, if thou doest well, if you bring the right sacrifice, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, what is there? Sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be, you know, sin lieth at the door when you are not carrying out the instruction, when you are not bringing the right sacrifice, my brother, sin lies at the door. It's because your heart is not yet right with God. It's because you are not able to surrender. You know what sacrifice means? It's giving something of value. It's giving something, surrendering your possession as an offering. You surrender that possession. You will bring it to God. You say, God, I'm not holding it back. Take. When you surrender it like that, God accepts it. Come back to chapter 8 of Genesis. Chapter 8. And in verse 21, when Noah had offered the sacrifice, verse 21, and the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, you know, a sweet savour, the sacrifice was the right one. It was number one thing he did. Many times, many of us, we won't say we are paying tithe. It's after we have spent the remaining money, we now say, God, help me. And the first fruits, we bring it before the Lord. My brother, my sister, if you are born again, if you are in the ark, you will not struggle. You will not struggle with this, you know, foundational teachings, foundational doctrines. If you want God to remember you, I am telling you, if you want, you know, sometimes I share some testimonies. Uh, I'm not, I'm not somebody who is 
crazy for, for wealth. I remember, let, let me tell you some, some. I remember about uh, 40 something years ago, my father called me and he was asking me, what do you want to be? Uh, what do you want to have? And I told him, I just want a two bedroom apartment somewhere. I mentioned the area. I don't want you to know the area. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, that's all I need. I don't, uh, and was looking at me that like, this boy, I, your father, look at what I've done. What are you talking about? I'm, but I'm telling you that I can never lack in life. Amen. There is a way God makes sure that those that sacrifice, he always meets their need. Yes. You will, there's no way. And it will keep coming at the right time. Something will happen. He will raise help. He will send helper. He will bless you. You know, there was a time I wanted to go and bring some of my children. And I didn't have the money. I was going somewhere with a particular uh, brother. And we were just talking. He said, uh, where we are going, he wants to give them this uh, card. Uh, there's a business opportunity. I said, ah, brother, this card you are holding, the way I look at it, the people that own this card, nothing will come out of this deal. He said, so I said, yes. I said, I know somebody. He said, you know someone? I said, yes. I just picked my phone. I spoke with the person. It didn't cost me up to one euro. But from that call, I finished spending the money, but 20,000 euro came to my hand. 20,000, just one call. God knows how to make sure supply comes. But we don't sacrifice. We're not ready to give up anything for God, for God's purpose. We're not ready to serve God with our life. And then God leaves us to struggle. But from this conference, you will not struggle anymore. Amen. Amen. You see, in this Genesis chapter 8, God looked at the, what he had brought and he said, this is nice. This is exactly what I want. This is exactly how I want it. And God said, because of this, let me finish reading that verse of scripture. Come back with me, verse 21. And he says, and the Lord said, in his, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his use. Neither will I again smite anymore. Everything living. And then God continues to bless them while the earth remaining, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night. It will never ever see because of a sweet smelling several. Look at Mark chapter 14. And you know, till today and until next year and until forever, this story will influence everyone that, you know, that, that reads it in Mark chapter 14. I'm reading to you from verse 8. Mark chapter 14, verse 8. Here, Jesus said, she had done that she could, what she could. She is come beforehand, aforehand, to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. What had she done? Look at verse 4 and 5. And there were some that, uh, let me read from verse 3. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, of spikenard, very precious, very precious. How many of us can bring our precious uh, goods and bring them before the church and bring them before the Lord and bring them before the household of faith? This woman... The Bible says a woman having an alabaster box of ointment or spikenard, very precious, and she break the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves. And they said, why was this waste of the ointment made? And then they continued because, verse 5, for it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured again. You know, what she brought was almost a year's wages of a full grown man. And other people could not understand that you bring wages of one year and expend it on the things of God. That's why today we are still talking about this woman. That's why we will keep talking about how Jesus will come. And if you will make up your mind, and if you will settle down and say, well, thank God I'm in the ark. Now it's time to sacrifice. You sacrifice your time. You sacrifice your efforts. 
your treasures, you put them down. Your talents, you put them down. I can tell you that nobody, you will not be forgotten. Oh, you can, yes. see, you can see our leaders. You can see what God is doing with them. But you can see this. It's remembered for acceptable sacrifice. You know, Peter came. If you read the story in Mark chapter 10, he came and he was talking and he said, you know, the one man came there, a rich man. I know many of us are not even rich yet. Yet we cannot give the little we have. And then he came and he said, uh, this man, go and sell what you have. And the man went away. And Jesus says, with man, it's impossible. And I can tell you, with ordinary man, it's impossible. It's the saved man that can sacrifice. It's the saved man that can bring that which he has. It's the saved man, the man in the ark, that can bring to the altar of God to meet with God. Is the man whose heart is yielded that can yield that which he has. When you find people trying to manipulate God, their heart is not yet yielded. They are like Simon the sorcerer who wanted to take something for what he did not qualify. You want to take something from God you don't qualify for. God is calling you today. Sacrifice something. Peter said, who can do this? Look at us. We have left all. That's in Mark chapter 10. Verses 27, 28, 29. And then Peter said, don't worry. You have left your parents because you are serving me. You have left, you didn't say wives, wife. You have left this. Not that you should leave your wife, but that you put Christ before her. You know, there are people that cannot put Christ before their husband. The church says, the Bible says, you will not put on that which pertaineth unto a man, but my husband wants me to put it on. No sacrifice, but you won't abide in supply. No sacrifice. There's no evidence that you can obey commandments of God. No sacrifice. You cannot yield your all to God. You cannot say God. You know, and, and such people, you find some people like that. They have challenges, but they will not yield to God. And they want God to bless them. It doesn't work like that. Peter said we have left all. Let's read it together. Mark chapter 10. Let's just read a few verses of scripture. Mark chapter 10. Tonight as you pray, when you shift your position and you get into the ark, God is going to remember you. Amen. In Mark chapter 10, I read to you from verse 28. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Can you live all and follow him? Can you be like Elisha and leave everything and follow him? Verse 29. And Jesus answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, there is no man, there is no woman that has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. You see what? Let me read verse 30. But he shall receive and not refold. You want supplies? Leave that little one in your hand first. A hundredfold now, in this time, houses, brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and in the world to come. It's and, that's, and that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. If only we can come to that point that the sacrifice we bring pleases God. What he does is he opens doors unto us. He multiplies blessings upon our lives. He makes sure that we do not lack. He makes sure that every need is met. He prepares the way ahead for us. No sacrifice. It was accepted by God. And it caused God to bless and establish him. You know, when you bring a sacrifice to God, it's like you are coming into a covenant with God. You are saying, God, I'm in agreement with you. Look at Psalm 50, verse 5. Psalm 50, verse 5. Psalm 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. This is God. He's calling his saints. Are you, are you one of them? Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. 
You don't get into a relationship with God without sacrifice, a covenant relationship. You accept the sacrifice of Christ. You bring your own sacrifice. You come in, in Romans chapter 12. Let me show you what God expects of you. Romans chapter 12. I read to you from verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies, not just heart, not just your soul, not just, you know, your riches. You present everything, your bodies, a living sacrifice, totally, holy, separated, yielded, pure, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, your expected service. That's your expected service. It's not that you are going to, you know, bargain with God. No, there's no bargaining. That's exactly what God expects of you. Exactly. And you know how I pray that in all our churches will bring sacrifice that is acceptable to God. Amen. That God, you know, so many people, they come the way we do it, the way we serve God, even we that we are leaders. You tell a leader, as a leader, show good example. No, they won't show example. That sacrifice is not acceptable. God is not going to bless you for rebellion. You can do it the way you want because that's the way it pleases you. That's not acceptable. Don't you see what Noah did? Don't you see how Noah did it? The Bible shows us everything God said he should do. He did it right to the letter. And then God said, this is acceptable. My brother, my sister, it's time for us to bring the type of sacrifice that is acceptable, holy, wholesome, total, not holding anything back. That's the type of sacrifice God is going to bless. And I know that as you come into a covenant relationship with God, afresh and new with God today, you will see new things. Amen. Your amen is very small. Amen. God wants to bless us. Amen. We saw Noah that Noah was in a way in the ark. And he didn't want Noah to remain in that small space. And whatever you may have today is still small space. God wants to enlarge our post. Amen. God wants to get us to the place where we're not worried whether we will eat tomorrow. We're not worried how will we meet tomorrow. He wants to get us to that place. He wants us to be so solid. He wants us to have supplies that takes care of the, of the kingdom work. He wants us to have supplies that will make the, uh, the, 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 the unbelievers ask, how did we do it? That's what God wants to do. He wants us to multiply. He wants us to replenish the earth. He wants to bring back the lost glory. He wants to bring back the blessings that we lost. He wants to bring them back. And he's going to start with us this conference. Amen. Amen. We are going to point three, replenishing for abiding supply. Replenishing. That's what God wants to do. In Genesis chapter 9, Genesis chapter 9, I read to you from verse 1, Genesis 9. And God, he blessed Noah and his sons. And he said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and, re and replenish and fill the earth. You know, when he says replenish, it means fill up again. You know, the, the whole earth had been destroyed. And sometimes, you know, Family resources have been destroyed. Sometimes, you know, some other issues there and, you know, here and there. But God wants a filling up again. Not only that, he wants a type of renewal. You need to know that everything has to be done over again, renewal. And then not only that, God also wanted us to be fully stopped. That, you know, when he said, bring them out, it was also with the cattle. And he said there will be multiplication. There will be a filling up. There will be a filling up. And God will do that for us in our homes, in our lives, in our families, in Jesus' name. Amen. When God remembers us, my brother, my sister, there will be a replenishing 
of what has been previously depleted. God's original plan of dominion, God brings us back to it. You know, I, I, I pray that by the time we finish this conference, the confidence of a child of God, that you know that there is nothing for you to fear. You know that God will not let you be unceremoniously, you know, dealt with. You know that God has your plan, your plan, your purpose. He has it at heart. He said, even if a woman will forget her nursing baby, a suckling child, he said, I, God, I will not forget you. He said, I have you inscribed in the palm of my hand. God is ready to bring replenishing after the flood. The flood may have been terrorizing you, pushing you here, pushing you there. The time is changing. Yeah. It's coming. All, yeah. the, all the depleted stock, they are going to be replaced. Yeah. The, the enemy that has been laughing, no more laughter for the enemy. You know, the Bible says in Romans 16, it says, shortly Satan will be bruised under your feet. Amen. When you are in the ark, how can Satan touch you with God? That's why, you know, if you read in that John chapter, uh, sorry, Job chapter 1, verse, verse 12, you find God told him, you can make all the noise around him, but don't touch him. You can't touch him. God wants us to have that confidence, confidence of what God will do tomorrow, how he, he cannot fail. I don't have... I don't have any doubts that God has tomorrow. And I don't know if you have any doubts. Do you have any doubts? No, sir. But tomorrow is certain. It will replenish and bring abiding supply. There will be right. supply every time. Every time there will be supply. There's no need to worry. Number two thing it does. There will be a restoration of lost years. Let's go, let's go to Joel chapter 2. Restoration of lost years. Joel, chapter two. There's something you thought you have lost. There's restoration. Amen. Your amen is small. Though. There's restoration. Amen. You know, like I told you, uh, I, can, I can share testimonies, but you know, it's good that as you look at the scriptures, and you believe the word of God, the same thing that the leaders of the church they are enjoying, you also will enjoy it. In Joel Amen. chapter 2, I'm reading to you from verse 25. Joel 2, verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the and the caterpillar, and Amen. the master, my great army, which I sent here, God is saying he permitted them to come. God doesn't have a hand in evil. Because you are not listening to God, God lets them, permitted them, allowed them. He said, I let them come among you. Verse 26, and ye shall eat in plenty. Amen. And you will praise the name of your Lord, the Lord your God. Who has dealt wondrously with you and my people. If I like Bible Church. Amen. And my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. No more shame. Amen. Things that uh, they said, uh, well, uh, last year, we don't think it's going to be possible again. It's going to be possible. Let me tell you three reasons. If you read in those verses, number one, God has said he will do wondrously wondrously you will do. That's number one. Number two, in those verses we read, he said that he is in our midst. Look at verse 20, 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people for emphasis shall never be ashamed. Number two is in our midst. Number three, he has said he is our God. Mm. And when God declares himself like that, and he says, I am your God, I am here, nobody can. That's all you need. 
and God is going to bring back all the years, the time, the treasure, whatever you have lost in any way, the door is opening for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, where it will replenish because of for abiding supply. There will be an acceleration of progress and prosperity. There will be an acceleration. There will be an acceleration. The thing that is taking some people about five years, your own will be just about one year, two years. That's what God will do. That's what God can do. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, it says, when you wait on the Lord like this, it says you will mount up with wings as eagles. You will fly above contemporaries. You, your wife, your husband, your children, everybody. God is saying there will be acceleration. Amen. Rapid progress, spontaneous progress, powerful prosperity. Things that you yourself will wonder at. The people that were laughing before, that's why he said, we will not be ashamed anymore. Amen. And he has said it. He has promised. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 says, my God will supply, will supply all your needs according to his riches. What needs do you have? Needs of marriage, my God will supply. Amen. My God will supply. Amen. My God will supply. Needs of investment, my God will supply. Amen. Need. My God will supply. He, that he, will, he will supply. He will supply. supply. He will supply. He will supply in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, but he wants you to ask. God is not a magician. You know, Pastor was telling us recently, the magician would say, sit down, and then he will entertain you. God doesn't entertain like that. God wants you to come. Number one, get into the ark. When you are in the ark, bring the right sacrifice. Don't be like Cain. Don't be like Cain. You know what the Bible says about him? He was lamenting. This mark on me is too great. How will I make it? Don't be like Cain. Be like Abel. The sacrifice that God will look at and say, this is my child. He honors me. He's not playing games with me. Don't play games with God. Bring the right sacrifice and come and see. I told you, one plus two will be three. Point one plus point two, salvation and sacrifice, abundant abiding supply. You will turn to the right, the door will open. Amen. The door will open. Of their Amen. own free will, of their own. That's why Peter was saying, we have done this. What else? He said, don't worry. In this world, if it is for my sake, if it is for the sake of the kingdom, you cannot. It's impossible. But it doesn't stop with you. The blessing will flow into your family. Your children will enjoy it. You know, Amen. many people who shortchange, who try to shortchange God, they shortchange their children. They shortchange their children. You won't, you won't get the blessing, yet your children also will start to suffer for it. Don't do that. The Bible says a good man, he will, he will heap up riches for his children, his children's children. Let your children enjoy. Bring the right sacrifice to God. Bring honor to the house of God. And come and see God putting your enemies to shame. God wants to laugh. God wants us to rejoice. God wants to remember us spectacular, miraculous blessings. He wants to open the doors wide. He wants the rains to drench us, the rains of blessing to drench his church. You know, many times when, you know, when, when uh, uh, we were younger and we'll be doing some things, I remember my father would say, ah, we're trying to save you from destruction. You say you want to go and join the other people that don't know what they are doing. We want to save you from lack. You say, no, I know how to do it myself. This is the way. If you want God to remember, when God remembers you, have you forgotten? You are redeemed. The devil cannot touch you again. When he remembers you, there is restraint. He tells him, don't touch that place. When he remembers you, he stops the storms 
the curses, the hex, it stops them. When he remembers you, the boat of your life will come to rest. Yes. That's what he does. And then when he remembers you, there's restoration. Things start, yes. to, they start to happen. I don't know if you are here tonight and you want God to remember you. Amen. You want God to remember you? Yes, sir. You are sure you want God to remember you? Yes, sir. Yes. That's why God called you here. That is why you are here tonight. God is ready to remember you. Whatever you have been struggling with over this period, I tell you with confidence, God is going to do it. Amen. It's time to talk to the Lord in prayer. We're going to talk to God in prayer. Let's rise on our feet and start telling the Lord, Lord, I am here to be remembered. In this conference, in this retreat, oh Lord, remember me. Let's start talking to the Lord in prayer. In this conference, my God will remember me. You will remember me. You will remember me. It's time to pray. It's time to talk to the Lord in prayer and say, God, here I am. Remember me. Oh Lord, remember me. Remember me. You remembered Noah. Remember me. You remembered something and you strengthened him. Remember me. Strengthen me. You remember Anna and you answered that prayer. You will remember me in this conference. That breakthrough is my portion in this conference. Even from this night, I am ready. From this night, I am ready. Let's start talking to the Lord in prayer. Start talking to the Lord in prayer that the Lord will remember you. He will remember, he remember Noah. He will remember you. You have spent a long time in the ark. It's time for you to come out and spread your wings. It's time for you to come out and spread your wings. Let's talk to the Lord in prayer. Tell the Lord, tonight you will remember me. Tonight you will remember me. Tonight you will remember me. It's time to pray. You must pray with seriousness. He still wants you to ask. He wants to pray, but he wants you to ask. He wants to pray for you, but he wants you to ask. Bible tells us in the book of his book here, all those blessings he has gifted to you. As you have watched, you have you come out of the act tonight. God will surprise you. You will not change your mind. It's time to call upon the name of the Lord. Tell the Lord, remember me. Remember me tonight, O God. Remember me tonight, O Lord. The Lord is looking at you. He's waiting for you to come. The Lord is waiting for you to come. God is asking you to come unto him. God is asking you to come All your needs are God being to reach you in glory. The Lord has promised to be abundantly. Abundantly, what we ask for him is time to call the prayer. Come to call the prayer. Let the moment pass you by. The Lord is going to do to open the doors unto me. The challenges we have been facing, they are coming to an end tonight. They are coming to an end tonight in the name of Jesus. The process is changing and setting to slow you down. In the night of the meeting with him, the Lord will visit you tonight. 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 Tonight, talk to God in prayer. Everything you have lost, the Lord is going to restore. There will be restoration. There will be restoration. Restoration of time. Restoration of resources. Restoration of any loss that you have had. Just call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Please, I told you at the beginning, and I want to remind you. And tonight is your night. Amen. The night when you're going to start new things in your life. Amen. I want to tell you, as I told you already, that if God is going to remember you, Amen. you must be in the ark. Yes. Amen. And I don't want you to fool yourself and say, well, 
I think I'm okay. I've been in the church now for 10 years. I don't put on trousers. I don't do this. I don't do that. Noah was in the ark. He walked with God. He walked with God. Have you been walking with God? This night can be the beginning. Amen. And where you are there, I want you to talk to the Lord. I'm going to pray with you. You want to give your life to Christ. You want to get into the ark of salvation. You want God to remember you. This is your time. Amen. This is your time. Amen. I want you to just lift up your hand where you are. I'm going to pray with you that the Lord himself will draw you close to himself. Amen. That the Lord himself will bring you close to himself. This is your time. Do not push the time away. Do not say, well, I think another time, maybe tomorrow, this is your hour. God wants to bring you into the ark. God wants to change your story. God wants to meet with that need in your life. God wants to settle you and bring you into the position of rest. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. As you are lifting up your hand to the Lord, I want you to start talking to the Lord and tell the Lord, Lord, I've not been the person I claim to have been. I'm sorry for the life I've lived in the past. A life of sin. A life where I have been compromising. You know, to give bribe, many Christians, many people in the church, they don't think is a is sin. Start telling the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry for that type of life. I'm sorry, God, for cheating on you. Many of us, we cheat on God. We cheat on God with all the things. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Break down the barrier, Lord, between me and you. Draw me closer to yourself. Cleanse me of all fields. You promise that you will cleanse me of every unrighteousness. Cleanse me tonight of every unrighteousness. I want to be in the ark so that I can be enlarged. I want you to remember me tonight, oh Lord. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I accept you, my Lord, as my personal Lord and Savior. I know Jesus died for me on the cross. And I come, I surrender myself. Lord Jesus, come and live in my heart. Come and live in my heart. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, because I know you're here. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you this moment, in particular for those who lifted up their hands, those that prayed and surrendered themselves to you, that you will be their Lord. Lord, I'm asking that from today, the grace to live and keep your commandments. Grant unto them in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, as many as have yielded themselves to you tonight, help them never to go back. Amen. Help them to stand until the end in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you because I know you will do it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, 
we pray. Amen. We're going to pray. I'm going to talk to the Lord. We saw in that Genesis chapter 8, where the Bible says that there was from the deep, there was the flood. But the Bible says in Isaiah 59 that the Spirit of God will lift a standard against that flood of the enemy. <laughs> We are going to cry to the Lord this evening and say, oh Lord, every flood of wickedness coming against my life and my family, arise and lift a standard against it. Arise and lift a standard against it. Let's talk to the Lord in prayer that the Lord will arise. He will bring the standard. He will lift the standard by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. Who lead us against the flood of wickedness in every life represented on this platform, in every life represented in this place, Lord, by your spirit tonight, by your spirit tonight, by your spirit tonight, bring an end to the flood of wickedness, bring an end to the flood of wickedness. Let us talk to the Lord in prayer. Every flood against your family. Against your life, against your work, against your document, let's talk to God in power in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit tonight. When the enemy is born like this, Lord, you said you will stop the standard. You said you will stop the standard. Tonight, Lord, by your spirit, by the power in the blood of Jesus, unchangeable King of Kings, and the Lord all. Mighty Father, God Almighty, you will forever send God back to the rest. Against your family, I saw the God of my pray that the Lord will be standard, standard to tonight to standard against the flood of the enemy. So tonight, 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 I come against them. Jesus, I come against them in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my Father, I bow in the name of Jesus Christ. I come to the Lord of my every weekend. I come to the Lord of my Father. I come to the Lord of my Father. I come to the Lord of my Father. Tonight, 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 in the name of Jesus. I come to the Lord of my Father. With your mighty tonight, it's not one end. The end of the flood of sickness. The end of the sickness must die in the name of Jesus. He said he will sanctify you. He said he will purify your heart. He said he will bring people to the church. He said he will pray. 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 He said against their wickedness. Voices of the wicked one, and then the silence forever in the name of Jesus, and then the silence forever in the name of Jesus. Pray tonight, pray tonight, exercise yourself in prayer. God will remember you tonight. You will bring an end to every storm. You will bring an end to the power of the Lord. You will bring an end to the Lord. You will alleviate it. You will sweep them away. You will sweep them away. You will sweep them away. In the name of Jesus. You will remember me. Remember us. As you remember Abraham. Father, remember us. In the mighty name. 
We pray. We're going to pray in Joel chapter 2. It says that everything you have lost, God said he will restore. Amen. But tonight, everything I have lost, I come to you. Remember me and bring restoration. Let's start talking to the Lord in prayer. Start Lord, we pray for our Father, we come to you. In this season, whatever you have lost, pray. Come to the Lord, remember me tonight. Remember me tonight. And bring restoration. Restoration. Restoration of talent, restoration of restoration. Whatever you have lost to upon the name of God, tonight is restoration. In the name of Jesus, tonight there is restoration. In the name of Jesus, tonight there is restoration. In the name of Jesus, whatever you have lost, this is the name of God. Whatever you have lost to God, whatever it is, my brother, my son, upon the name of God. Because of help, the Lord will bring it back. Restoration. Father, restore. Father, you restore. Father, you Father, you remember Father, you remember remember you Restoration in the name of Jesus. Restoration in the name of Jesus. Restoration in the name of Jesus. There will not be any shame again. Because God is the Lord of the people of everyone. He will remember you. He remembered Noah. He is remembering you tonight. for in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you restore us, O Lord. Father, you restore us. O Lord, you restore us. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that comes out of you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. As we come to you tonight, Father, we think our heart has been lost. Father, you restore us. 
from every quarter, from every quarter. Lord, we pray tonight that we will Said he will supply all your need. Riches. Whatever Amen. need you have, you are going to bring it before the Lord and tell the Lord, Lord, I need this. I need that. I need that. This is your time. Start talking to the Lord in prayer. Bring it before the Lord. You want God to talk to the Lord in prayer. You want wife to talk to the Lord in prayer. You want a husband to talk to the Lord in prayer. You want the God to purify your heart to talk to the Lord in prayer. This is your time. It is your time. Father, we 
Father in heaven, we want to thank you for all that you've done already. Thank you, Lord. In and asking, Lord, that for those that have given their lives and they are coming to the ark, Lord, with your mighty hand, keep them in the ark in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, your children have come to you. You remembered Noah. And when you remembered him, you set uh, an edge around him. When you remembered Noah, you brought him into a large place. Lord, I'm asking that for every one of your children here tonight who have asked you to remember them, Father, I'm asking, take them into a large place in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue in this conference, Lord, multiply your blessings upon us. Amen. Thank you because we know you here. Thank, Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.